you had him last year in round 15 when he went forward. So we're set to go. St Kilda and Richmond. It's round four from Marvel Stadium. Matty's match. Let's hope it's a cracker. Tigers making four changes at selection. So Marshall in the ruck, no rider. That was significant. Jones getting the ball, but it's going Richmond's way. And Edwards straight away is punching the air. And that took all of 12 seconds. We have just spoken about Richmond football. That's the epitome of it right there. They swarmed in numbers, even though St Kilda won possession of the ball. Have a look at the numbers just swarm chasing here. Create the turnover and then look at them steaming ahead with the football, running forward. A great finish from Edwards and they're off and running. And you reckon they weren't happy about oh, it. They boy, came yeah. from everywhere too. The half backs were up and about. They got across to, to pat the back of Edwards, who was the one who finished. You, you felt a bit for Ben Long then, because he peeled off in position to get the handball received from Jones, and as soon as Jones fired it past him, Edwards was goal side, and geez, a class finisher. I feel mean taking over the commentary here. Uh, Hutto didn't get much of a go there. Do you want to have a second no, go? No, no, over to you, Ed. <laughs> here we go, Shane Edwards. What a start it has been for the Tiger champion. What a great player he's been. 259th game. That was his 164th goal. So, big man Kervis back in for the Tigers. He played, obviously, the first game of the season and has been out. Marshall, who's been good all year, kicks forward. And Butler, I think uh, Jason said in the pre-match, probably winning the Saints best and fairest at the moment, the former Tiger. He kicks forward, Membry out. No, no, that was Marsh, in fact. Couldn't quite hold the mark. Nearly did enough. Jones tried to pick the pocket. Did well. Jones in goes, and again, was it grabbed high? No, umpire wraps him up, says well, the ball. So the decision not to play Ryder today, I mean, they've listed as soreness, but you'd have to think it's something they've, they've decided. But they were a bit too tall up forward last week. So Marsh is in the forward line. Looks like he's got a bit of a defensive forward role on Grimes. Presti tries to get it out. Hooley eventually does. Picked up by Patton. Now Hill to the hot spot. Big chance pushing the back, was it? No. King was shoved out of the way, comes down to Jones. The snap at goal is offline and over the line, out of bounds on the full. Back here, back here, Sorry, back so it was dynamic Jones a couple of weeks ago, but he was one that wasn't able to perform at the same level last year as he did against the last week as he did against the Bulldogs. But Saints have a chance to try and keep it in their forward half. <laughs> this man at his best is unstoppable. His handball wasn't great, though. So opportunity for Dean Kent. He was the man that comes into the team. For Ryder, can he make the most of it off his right boot? Didn't get the waiting right. Stack, though, didn't finish the defensive job. Butler pounced, and they have a goal. An answering goal. And the former Tiger would love that more than most goals against his old team and scores a level. Well, you can't blame the, the Jew or the, the couple of bad for, errors there. For the uh, spilt Dean Kemp mark on the chest looked like he was going to swallow that one, and then he had enough time and space up against the Ruckman that he was able to squeeze it into the corridor and stack spilled a soda. So it's a good answer from St Kilda, and this man Dan Butler, he's been every, in everything since the recommencement of the season. Just ran at it hard he was approaching the footy and then got caught in between taking it on his chest or taking it in his hand Sydney stack and he's made a meal of it so a few little nerves there but well done to Dan Butler that's a great finish and he'd love to make an early statement against his old team he's made an early statement this year hasn't yeah, he yeah terrific he's been great but in sensational form as we've mentioned so Dan Butler gets the first for the Saints a goal apiece he was one of the few last week that really stood up for them. 16 disposals, two goals, one and four tackles. So away we go again with Toby Nankervis up and gets the thump forward. But it's picked up by Ross, who is tagging Dustin Martin as we speak. It'll be a great battle. Hill trip. Good call by the umpire. Gresham's kick is a ripper and another set shot at goal coming up. So, Membry. Has kicked 171 goals, 85 in his 96 game career, and this is a big kick. The Saints have to be accurate early. It is the real benchmark for the Saints. When they're offline, they're horrible, aren't they, really? And if they get it going early, they can get that momentum. Yeah, it's been an issue for a number of years now, that accuracy. So Tim Membry is one of the better kicks, 171, 85, as I said. The history looks good. 
from 35 directly in front. Umpire moves across and it's hit the post. Rui was really pumped that you, you asked him the question about the accuracy in front of goal there, Ed. Been an issue for about three years, I don't <laughs> So Tigers on their way out, but it is critical. We've seen how important this year, particularly that making a good start has been for all teams. So you've got to make the most of your opportunity. Hooley bangs Richmond back up towards the wing. That's well up the ground, applies a good tackle. And Hill underneath all of that, we're going to get a restart. Saints will be happy with that, that, that stalemate there because we know that's such an important play for Richmond, that long to the contest, and then they win the ball and chain out through there. Martin just missed Edwards with the handball, had back up, Baker back in the team, and it's straight ahead football for the Tigers again from Edwards to Caddy. They're on the move, Castagna found a way through, Lynch chained it up, and Higgins, well, it was good pressure. It was a bit of a hack kick forward, and Carlisle, who... Got back to some of his better intercepting form last week. Does the job there. So that's a, a bit of a win for the, for the Saints and their defensive structures there because the Tigers were really threatening. Hill on the way out. And comes off Marshall's hands. His recovery is good. There's Tigers in his face. Decides to keep it in and see if he can progress. Martin, he's in the thick of plenty so far. And keeps things alive for the Tigers. Initially through Lambert, but now volleyed back by Hill. And uh, Richmond will stop across half back. And on. Opportunity on. for Asprey to send them up towards half forward. Here. So Asprey's kick intercepted. Hold good there. mark taken there Hold too. There. So it's good over his head. Steel for a uh, for a midfielder. Yeah, Jack Steele's kick up. Almost a good mark there by Nan Curvis. At the fall of the ball's picked up by Short, who went long. And Howard takes the mark. He's been one of the better players too for the Saints so far this year. You liked his work, Root? Howard I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, he started well. He's a big body. So between him and Carlisle, their ability to intercept is going to be so important. We know the modern game, it's, it's a big part of it. It's a beautiful kick and Marsh comes out and takes it full chested. Swings onto the boot. Kicks it up towards King. Up he goes. Couldn't quite get it. Member at the fall of the ball. Open goal coming up. Marshall kicks it. Saints get their second. Great play. Been impressed with the foot skills of the Saints. They're looking for targets. They're not just bombing the ball forward. And a couple of times we've seen them exploit Richmond, who are very quick to zone off and guard space. They're finding loose players. That's a terrific kick, that one there, coming out of defence. That was a really good hit from Nick Caulfield. And that opened it up. Looked like he was in position to actually get that one. King just got caught a little bit off balance, but good numbers, good hand pass, another goal. They look dangerous. Love the play from memory because we, we saw this a few times last week. St Kilda players in position to lay the ball across their boot, which wouldn't have been a, a certain goal, but they had teammates in better position. So memory identified that then really quickly, got the ball over the top to Marshall just to make sure of it. Well, he was one of the most improved players in the AFL last year. He was there, he carried their ruck load. And this year, up until now, he's been sharing it with Paddy Ryder. So it's been a very different profile for Rowan Marshall. But he's back as the main man this afternoon. So far, so good. He's kicked, got forward, kicked a goal. And the Saints have a seven-point advantage. Now, Curvis doing the job for Richmond, wins the tap. Pressed here onto it smartly to Dustin Martin. The blast away kick, Jack's on the move, but... Good solid defence, Clark wears one. No pokey kick forward, out comes Lynch to try and take it. Carlisle, good combat at ground level. And Lambert was about to make the great escape and he had a few to handball too. Jack Ross was one of them, but it's a ball up. So there's a vacant goal square just to the right here of this contest. So Richmond will be looking to run into that. Martin's hand pass, Lynch, Carlisle. Hanbury, pokey kick, there was danger about, but Butler good enough to hold strong for the Saints, and they get on the move with an extra number here, and King takes the mark. Yeah, King took the mark, and Membry did well to block for him. Now he's got a player on. It's a one-on-one -on -one contest. Marsh gets the front spot, off hands, couldn't quite grab it. Oh, oh. he didn't have first touch on that. No chance. I thought Marsh had it all the way, but anyway, Asprey got the mark. Hooley's called the play on. Not much on, so he has to go long and high to a one-on-one -on -one contest. The Saints got the numbers across the ball now. Good little handball that's flicked out there. Came out from Loney. Holding the man, St Kilda. So the Saints will get another shot at goal. Josh Battle. Yeah, just held on a little bit too long there, short. 
knock the ball out in the tackle. It's always tough when you're the tackler from behind like that. You're not sure whether the player still has possession or not. Pretty ordinary kick out of the defensive 50 from Basher Hooley yeah, too. Played He's himself into on, on in played on into trouble, yep. didn't he? Looked up and saw nothing. So Battle, who has kicked 11 goals five in game number 27, back into the side. 40 metres out, not much of an angle, should kick this and has. And the Saints have got their third. I think what's really impressive about this from St Kilda is Tigers got off to a perfect start. They kicked the goal in 10 seconds. They were up and about. The body language, they were pumped. They were all high-fiving, thinking, yep, here we go. And they've just steadied. They've then controlled the game since then. They've exploited the Tigers. They've put pressure on them. They've separated them when going forward, which has been really impressive. And at the very worst, created one-on-one -on -one competitions if they can't find loose players. It's a strange old kick from Hooley Low, after the, yeah, the, the decision, wasn't it? He rolled to play on, but he still had a one-on-one -on -one out there, but just kicked it to the advantage of the St Kilda player. And Josh Battle, nice. It was a little little stinger off the tee, wasn't it? it <laughs> kept it low. And look at that, the scores from turnovers, which has been something that's been hurting Richmond. It is today, that's for sure. See, Tigers were still able to create some of that forward half turnovers themselves last week, but weren't able to score from them. So look at that as it progresses through the afternoon, one of the hallmarks of Richmond when they're at their best. They're up against it early again. Marshall allowed to get the clean tap down and the takeaway. Here's Hannabury's. Saints pressing again. And that was good, sturdy work back there. And Flostone just held his ground. Did they go with Broad there as the uh, the Greek role as the yeah, which was, undersized ruckman? We have seen a little bit so far this year. Oh, it's an interesting call. Hard. It'll continue to be that. Through well with most teams this year. We haven't seen too many go with the the regular two rucks. So now Hooley. A few costly turnovers so far in this game, and that was almost another one. But Cochin, who has continued his excellent form this year, kicks towards centre half forward. Out comes Lynch, can't take it. Clark stole the march for the Saints. Steal. Grimes over the top. Busy on the wing here. Short gets mauled by Butler. And they're going to have the ball up. Set. That may not, have, as we take a look at St Kilda, just applying a little more pressure than the Tigers, but neither at the level they'd like them to be. That kick then from Clark was actually a good one, even though it created a contest, because if he bombs that forward, there's two or three Richmond players further back, so they're able to lock it up and get a stoppage. Jones, who was aggressive in his intent, and in the execution, found Ross, and now Butler on the move, sets the kick for memory. Gee, that was a good assessment of what was ahead of, wasn't it? It Great was. Kick. Look, I'm not quite sure whether he was going for King or Membry. It was a little bit off the outside. If he was going for Membry, they were both there. They were both there, so it's a great kick. And what's impressed me, really, has been the decision-making going forward. Gee, the fancy footwork from Jones as well to be able to find space. It just opened the whole thing up after that. Good decision from Butler. I'm going with him, Jace. I think it was all intentional. <laughs> right on the chest. You've got to give him a benefit, don't you? See the way it spun? <laughs> Last week, just three marks, six disposals, and one behind Tim Membry. In general, he's a beautiful kick of the football. And that is no exception. And the Saints have kicked four in a row. And that's a wonderful start. We've seen low-scoring footy this year, but we have seen some teams get away to fast starts and then hang on. And the Saints have certainly done that so far. Really, we highlighted how bad their first quarters had been, the Tigers. I think it was outscored 2-58 to 58 yep. in, in first quarters thus far. But they got the perfect start with the first goal, and then nothing. And now they're conceding goals just far too readily. This, this is just unlike their organisation behind the football. Yeah, well, for all the talk about the, the Richmond forwards and their, their lack of form, it's only gone in there three times so far this quarter. Let's get down to Sarah Jones. The Saints have a big asset on their bench, former Hawks champion Jared Ruffett, very much running the show. He has a big role on the bench today, instructing particularly the Fords as they're coming off. He's been very, very vocal with the group, and gosh, what a good asset to have. Well, you want to get Dan Butler back on the ground as quickly as possible because he's just about been... He's in all-Australian form at the moment, Dan Butler, in the games he's played for St Kilda. Kicked the goal, set one up. He's been absolutely fantastic this year for them. Highest-ranked player on the ground so far, too, Ed. All right, so Clark let that one go through his hands. 
Jack Revolt on top of it, and he's ridden into the ground. We'll have a ball up just inside the 50 for the Saint, uh, for the Tigers, rather. So you see Dustin Martin back on ball now. So we know Seb Ross picks him up on ball. Wilkie gets him when he goes forward, and then Seb Ross rolls to uh, Prestia. So only the fourth time the Tigers have had it inside 50. They haven't even had it deep in 52 often. Caulfield's kick out was a good one. Jones again crashes through, does it well. Gresham just gets the handball out. Billings tries to crash through, gets the handball out. Oh. And there's one too high, and Grimes cops him in the bush for his measure. Let it go. And takes it. Now, if they can get it out the other side, there's Tigers everywhere. Too far, though. So Grimes just waits now. Sorry, they're taking on the tackler a bit, aren't they, yeah. the Saints? I, li I like the fact that they're being aggressive, the Saints. In actual fact, they're a little more aggressive than the Tigers look at this point in time. Short, nice kick to McIntosh, who marks on centre wing. Kicks up the line, beautiful looking kick too. Good closing effort there from the Saints. It's, <laughs> it's really interesting because for the last few seasons we've sat there and said Richmond doesn't depend on manpower. They're systems based and it's the way they play their, their game. They don't look like they've got much game style or game system at the moment. So Dusty Martin lurking at the moment has had one kick and four handballs from limited opportunity. Handball over the top comes from Prestia to the skipper. Cochin's kick slides into the hot spot. Long, twisting, turning. Might have taken him on too long. Now he's in trouble. Gone. Free kick to the Tigers. You. Again, you can see the intent, though. They're, they're not going to panic. They're going to take the opposition on. Yeah, he got caught. And it's not an ideal position to get caught. But they, they've got that sort of mentality all over the ground at the moment. They are not coughing up the ball. They'll take on the tackler and then try and link up. OK, well, we've seen already over this weekend the misses that uh, the Tigers had in round three. This is what they've based their game on, Ed. Yep. Turnovers like this, crowding opportunities and then punishing teams. So Costanya comes in. 86 goals, 73 in his career so far. Game number 80. From right on the spot where they missed last week. He's learned from it and put it right through the middle and the Tigers get their second. Just a chaos ball inside 50. But when you've got the quality of players that they do at ground level up in that forward 50, even their tools are pretty good at applying the pressure and you called it, Jace. It doesn't, al doesn't always have to be no. the perfect service to try and create or manufacture an opportunity to have a shot on goal. He was a little unlucky, Ben Long. I mean, even though he's taken on three blokes, at no stage did he have time to actually get rid of the ball. But that's the, the sort of besieging that they want in their forward 50, the Sweet. Tigers. We were discussing uh, earlier, this has been a, a problem for them, not so much creating the intercepts, but scoring from Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a bit of their ball, ball use stuff. They just haven't quite had the composure at times to execute the way they've the way they've played over the last few seasons. The pleasing thing is from that graphic that they're actually causing yes. turnovers. Yeah, as I said, some of their, their ball use by hand, which is normally so good and creative, was a little down in the last couple of weeks. So they've been inside five times. They've kicked two goals. And they're going back to a 13-point margin. Ross sends some Kilda out wide. Marshall tried and got a bit of a tough bounce. McIntosh closed him out. And then Baker tried to link up by hand. A fumble from Hooley made things difficult. Edwards tries to tidy up. Now Curvis got some issues here, surrounded by Saints. But it comes back Baker's way. And he sends Caddy on a run on the wing. And there's that forward handball from the Tigers. Lynch was on the lead. Stack doubling up. Higgins and Caddy there with him. And that time the delivery was excellent to Cochin. So they might have just clicked into gear here. Play on. Little layoff handball and Lynch puts it through. Well, it didn't take long for Richmond to fight back. That's a good decision, I think, from Cochin because he would have been kicking from just outside 50, and I don't think he had the confidence that he was going to make the journey. And Tom Lynch just looking around. That probably was the kick that they should have ignored the Tigers going forward, kicking to a one on two in the pocket, but they're able to keep it alive. And you can see Cochin presents, and look at Tom Lynch doubling around at the top of him into space, and he ends up kicking from 45. It actually worked it out really well. Yeah, he ran past about three St Kilda players too. They were all asleep. That's why you just need that bit of game awareness, that game sense to know, mm, Cochin, he might not have the journey from here. 
Because if it's not Lynch, you, you've got to you've got to assume that a player like Hooley or one of these guys is trying to get on the end of it. Yeah, the big kicking Tigers like to wrap around outside 50, and Lynch did it beautifully there, ran past his captain, and had plenty of space. As Dick Rewald said, much to his chagrin there, no one locking up that hole or putting a bump on Lynch as he got through. So back to seven points of difference. St Kilda in front, though. Tigers will kick the last two. Then Curvis gets it out. Cochin on the left foot just points it out. Caddy leads the race. Hill off the carpet. Does it well. And they'll take a throw in on centre wing. So Marshall for St Kilda up against Nan Curvis for the Tigers. And Curvis did it well, used his strength. Hanabry picks his pocket, gets it down. It's picked up by Marshall. Bombs it long. Oh, good mark. Battle's done well. And he's got it at 55. Bruce, you got it in him? Well, he'd have to kick it a, a bit differently to his last attempt because that was a low, flat one. But he is a thumping kick of the footy, Josh Battle. So they'd, li they'd like that matchup, battle against Hooley. Yeah, mate, got it. So battle is going to kick from just inside or just outside the 50. The taller Revolt takes the mark. He's given it plenty. And won't be through for a goal. It's just offline and has gone through for behind. They're going to check this one. We'll do all the world behind, boys, but we might have a bit of a look. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be... Um, Jaden Short that takes the kick out. I was watching pre-game and it was David Astbury who was take, practicing some kick outs from the goal screen. He was kicking big barrels and kicking barrels into the middle of the ground. I hope he gets licensed to do that today. He was making such good contact with them. I don't think the ball was fully over the line when he held it and he's got it in one grab, big name Curvis here, so this will be a mark. Be so Looking at these angles, we can see the ball is controlled before it crosses the back of the behind line. Decision on the scoreboard. So we'll get the decision. The goal umpire said it was marked. So we would expect no score. The arc powered by RMIT University, and that's exactly what it was. You'd probably rather a behind if you're Richmond, so you get the ball in shorts, ham and hands and then <laughs> curve as long down the line. Rather than the big Rackman. A big neck, clearing kick. Goes for Lynch, but there's big bodies around him, both in front and behind. So it's very much up for grabs. Three and a half minutes remaining in this opening term. So fascinating opening quarter. Richmond kicks a goal in 20 seconds, and then St Kilda kick four in a row. And now Richmond hit back with a couple. So delicately poised at a seven-point margin as we get a bit closer to the first break. And entitled to expect a few goals. Kick today, too. Under the roof, perfect conditions. No due to worry about. And won't we welcome that? Hannibal with a handball. Billings, can he forge a path through? Sits in the pocket. Loney couldn't get access to the footy. Well done, Baker. He is an important player for them. Had a great year last year, particularly when he came back in the, in the back half of the season as a defender. Toby, and went thank you. Home to WA briefly thank you. for a family friend bereavement yes, yes. for a funeral. And Welcome back into the Richmond team today. So seven points is the margin at the moment. Grabbed by Marshall. Dispense with straight away. On Ed Curvis. And Cotson tried to kick it. It didn't really end well. Loney with a centering ball. King towering and Kent. Oh. He has that ability to kick a goal, Dean Kent. And he's put it through for their fifth of the opening term. And well done to St Kilda. The last thing you expected, given the angle of his body and where the goals were, was for him to kick that left footer. <laughs> and he's kicked the left foot, but uh, left footers love their, their normal peg, don't they? Good centering kick. It looked like King was going to swallow this one up. That's extraordinary yeah. just to flick it with the left foot from there. Just timing wise, he wasn't going to have the opportunity to throw it on his right with the pressure coming from Grimes. Oh, that's very clever, clever work. And King again, I mean, we saw, we saw this a few weeks ago against the Western Bulldogs where it looked like he could have taken eight to ten yes. contested marks. So he is getting to the right spots and getting his hands on them. And but all he's got to do is compete. Once, yeah, because that right. creates opportunities for the others. As long as he's not outmarked and he doesn't look like getting outmarked, does he? Once he starts completing those plays, look out. Yep. So Kent turns Superman at Marvel and kicks a beautiful goal. Oh, <laughs> I like it. 11 clearances to six in Kilda's way, so let's see what they do this time. They've 
got a ruckman in then Curvis made it work for him backed up his own play thrown to the ground and by course play a little toe poke from Billings goes out right to Caulfield who's been pretty good so far today for half back flank and takes it to the boundary line third year now Nick Caulfield and Hunter Clark both across half back pick seven and eight so much invested in that draft really wasn't it yeah, absolutely Caulfield had 15 disposals last week in a losing side. He played well, starting to get some confidence as well, Rude. Yeah. Be happy with what he's been yeah. doing now. What happens here? Yeah. Lynch goes up and takes a screamer. Absolute ripper. And that is what he has brought down to this Richmond side to do. Kick the ball high. The, the release kick, if you like, boys. And he goes up and takes it in one grab. This is just beautiful aerial work by Tom Lynch. Well, that's a good mark because Deagle Howard went up, tried to double fist it. He went up high, but he couldn't get there. And he's normally a great spoiler. Now, too. He is. And this guy's normally a pretty good kick in front of goal, and you expect him to kick it from there. Well, he's done it 21 times from this position, and he comes in and goes off his boot beautifully, and Lynch gets his second, and the Tigers come back. That's where you really miss a crowd, isn't it? If someone takes a big <laughs> back like that. Now, you can see Carlos taking that position inside him, Lynch just slips around the back it was Howard does the right thing he comes up yeah. you know leaves his man and goes to the contest to spoil he just can't get up high enough from where Tom Lynch is actually marking the ball when you saw the positioning that Carlisle had on on Lynch originally you would have thought that he would have been the one that would have swallowed it but was just not not quick enough to react Lynch read the ball in the air much better and it, like we spoke about Max King in the pregame, when, when these big key forwards, when they high point the ball like that, yep. as Lynch did then, I mean, Dougal Howard's 200 centimetres tall. He just couldn't get up there. So Richmond have up the ante on the pressure stakes. Well, they needed to. They genuinely needed to, and it's got them back in the contest. Fantastic. They have nine goals kicked oh, in the first quarter hard, so far. <laughs> back in the middle, Marshall. Got the tap down, but Edwards with the clearing hand pass to Broad. He was looking for reinforcements, but well anticipated by Battle. Turnover affected. Hanabry sends Butler on his way for another. Oh, just didn't quite get the angle off the boot. He did have the pass over the top there, but also fair enough to have the shot from that point of view. It was. He just he, he didn't feel he had time to settle and kick the drop punt. Thought he'd get comfortable on the angle, but never really got himself in the right position. No tall on the re-entry kick from Asprey. No, I want to see one. He was he was bombing them seriously to the logos, just short of the wing. Pressed out. Aggressive handball to Lynch, who's covering a lot of territory, but influential on this opening term. Ross found a way to get it back to him. Tigers attacking. Dusty's out the back, but Bing Long with the hunt down tackle. That is outstanding. And Jones decides to take the advantage and send Gresham on his way. It's one thing that Tom Lynch does do is he just takes a little while to wind up to kick the ball, doesn't he? He has a unique kicking style and it gave them time to run him down. But that looked a bit more like Richmond, didn't it? Yeah. With, the, with the handball, with the surge, it wasn't perfect, but numbers for the Tigers were able to mop it up. So inside the last minute of this opening turn, the Saints have got the ball up in their half forward flank position. A chance for Hill, bombs it long. Memories the man underneath it. Oh, he almost pulled it in too. He would have beaten two of them. Couldn't quite get there in the end. Vlostin gets the handball going. Edwards, Hooley, now a chance for Stack. Stack back to Hooley. They're on here. Out they go wider still. And look at them run down the middle of the ground, the Tigers. Great running play there by Bolton. Ran to the spot. Now a chance. And Revot will go from the forward pocket with only seconds remaining. In fact, he'll probably kick it right on the bell here. Probably be the last kick of the quarter. That was clinical, Rui. You just spoke about moving it the way Richmond want to move it. They ran in numbers from deep in defence and just kept finding targets, opened it up, took risks to keep the ball moving, a flick hand pass over the top, all worked beautifully. Go on, Nick, call your cousin, mate. This is for Matty. Or oh, did he get the oh, kick off? No. Did he get the kick off? Oh, I don't know if that's all clear at all. I yeah, thought the siren went before he kicked it. I think the siren. Two seconds left. I wasn't sure. Punch it. Yeah, no, OK. If you punch it, it should have been a mark. Yeah. The way I looked at it, I wasn't sure. You better play it. I had to call play on. Yeah. So they've paid this a point. Now, I suppose the, the point we need, the aspect we need to look at is whether in taking his shot there, 
Jack Revolt actually ran past the line yes. of where the mark yes. is. Yeah. So he can start outside the mark yeah. and come back to it. But once he goes across it and opens up the angle, it's play on. It's play on. So where's the one? Let's have a look at this. So you can see where the angle is. Oh, yeah, he's it. played on. He's played on. He has played on. I think he kicked it before the siren sounds. Oh, it's close. It was close. I thought the I siren went so. just... All right, we might have another go at it when we come back. Okay. Siren Gate. Let's siren Gate. Yeah, yeah, let's siren Gate two points. Saint stats. Zach Jones with seven. Brad Hill with six. Dan Butler with six. And Dan Hanabry with five. All players have recruited in the last couple of seasons. Been brilliant. All right, so second quarter. Marshall over the top with a bit of an extra run up. Got the tap down. Still the extra tap for Ross. The Tigers' intensity, as we saw with the pressure gauge before quarter time, has definitely lifted. We showed pre-match. There was eight Tigers that didn't lay a tackle last week. We laid 18 in the first quarter. Ross gets it end on end to half forward. Got Billings and then Hill involved. Further back to Long. And so the, the pressure from Richmond is relentless, trying to affect the turnover. Long's able to just keep a clear head. And it's Hill that has the release oh. kick into the middle, but it went straight to Prestia. And so the Tigers now can try and utilise the turnover. So Higgins, little kick forward to Dusty. Martin's kick, a bit high. Butler at the fall of the ball, flicks it out. King. So Jones does it nicely. They need to get it forward, though. They've had it on that half-back line for, it seems, an eternity. So now they get their chance through Kent. Membry further up the ground. Kent wants the short. He does. Good kick. Called it up nicely. Almost a mark to Marshall. Marshall goes in again. Almost grabbed high. It was a clever kick from Kent because yep. he just put it up on Baker's head and allowed Marshall, who's got him by about three feet, to run up and, and launch. Just wasn't able to complete the mark. So throw in on centre wing. Then Curvis up against Marshall. Protecting the spot well named Curvis. So we'll have another stalemate and they'll have another go. We mentioned Paddy Ryder left out of the side. How have you seen Marshall now that he's doing the number one ruck roll and, and most of the work against Nan Curvis? He looks more involved in the game. Just just from sheer fact that he's at, he's at stoppages and then he's able to use his great strength, which is his mobility as a big man. And he had a clear win on that occasion and he'll get another go at it now as the ball travels about 45 metres up for a throw in on the half foot flank for the Saints. Just such a good athlete, letting him contest the first um, throw in or ball up, then allows him to break from the contest, doesn't it? So Jones is the loose man here to get underneath the pack. Marshall. Holding Richmond. Richmond. Oh, that's 50. Oh. That's 50. 50. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you get away with that one maybe if there's 100,000 at the game screaming, but yeah. not today. That was bizarre. We could hear it up here. Costly one. There are the numbers. Marshall and Nan Curvis. We are hearing them. We are mic hearing them mic'd up though, really. <laughs> so Nan Curvis goes short to yeah, Caddy. You still heard him. <laughs> the players should be able to hear the umpires pretty clearly. Caddy goes to the forward pocket. Revolt. That's a good lead. The great mark. Under pressure. A little clip for his trouble. Yeah, he could have got a, might have got pulled back, but no. So let's see, what do we do here? Oh, no, this is right on that threshold where you're probably a bit far out to run out and try and snap it. So he might run out and try and kick the drop punt. In line with me, Just look Jack. for him to get a little bit more, more momentum through the footy than he has in previous weeks. So holding the ball for the drop punt. You can see the balls have been kicked in a lot. So scrubbing some of that shininess off. A pet hate of yours, Ed. It is. Oh, nice little kick. And as a result of that, Jack Revolt goes back and puts it right through. There's one for Matty. You count on one hand the number of drop punts he could kick from that pocket. That is an exceptional kick, and that's the start he was looking for. Missed a couple late last week, which could have proved costly. Wasn't striking them well. Has done some work during the week. Was working on it again in the pre-game. We saw him out there having a number of shots. And even though, again, a slightly low percentage option, uh, when you can finish with that sort of quality, that's a brilliant set shot. Hasn't kicked the goal in his last two games, so that is a beautiful way. A strong mark. Took the physical contact and then splits the middle from the boundary line. Jason, that That's is full forward 1A, isn't it? That is a dart. Had a little, little yeah. bit of the Josh Kennedys in the run-up, too. A little <laughs> stutter step. Oh, don't tell him that. I mean, he's up and about. 
It was great forward craft. It was one, two, three leads. Got in behind Dougal Howard, which is where he was able to create the separation. Sometimes you get that separation too because the Ruckman's there and the defender just relaxes a bit. Jack average is 2.8 goals per game here as compared to 2.2 at the MCG. Oh, oh high ball. Stack, we know he can fly. He just hung a little bit. He went up a little bit too early on that he, occasion. He did well to hang there without interfering and then actually touch the footy because it looked like he'd gone miles too early. Let's have a look. What I can tell you is if he had have taken the mark, it would have been perhaps the best ever. That was an incredible flight. Loney get, won't get too many better chances than that. Got his timing right. Crafts it through for a goal. So this is a goal fest, and aren't we loving it at Marvel Stadium? So good. Perfect he's, condition. He's not loving that one. Well, he'd be disappointed with that. A crumbing goal where there was no defensive sweeper at the back of the contest. They normally get numbers back, the Tigers, and they normally mop these things up. But no one got to the back of the contest. And that's a good finish. It's an important little touch from Marsh. It was almost like he basketball dribbled the ball a couple of times and got it out into the space. They normally get a goalkeeper back in the in the square on that occasion, the Tigers. Didn't happen. You'd have liked the finish too, Jace. As long as he kicks it. As long as he kicks it, Rui. He's a left footer, and left footers, as a tradition, as a general rule, do not have a right foot. <laughs> so, so you're like the MRO then, you only care about the outcome. Yeah, correct. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it, really? No. I'm about the product that we're putting to the people. <laughs> You're all about the people. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Finally learned it. So 11 goals kicked, and we're only six minutes into this second quarter. We've got a great game of football at Marvel Stadium between two clubs fighting hard. And another ball up. 38 to 31, a goal apiece this term. Saints led by seven points at quarter time. They got out to a 19-point lead at the 13-minute mark, but they were reeled in by the Tigers. So ebbing and flowing this game so far. Long off the ground. To the outer side. Saints go forward. Marshall did well to bring it to ground. Steele hacks it out. Hooley has to go. Going harder, though, was Loney. And then wrapped up by Hooley and will have a ball. They're throwing themselves in here, both teams. There's a lot riding on this game. We know both teams really keen to properly get their season going. Holding the man, Richmond. So and then Kervis gets his second holding free kick against Marshall. And he's doing it well here, Rui, isn't he? He's planting himself, Big Nan Kervis, protecting the spot, and Marshall's having to fight to get into it. Well, he knows if it's a leap, then Marshall's probably more athletic on that side of the contest. So he's turning it into a battle of strength there and winning. So the Tigers getting the switch going. Broad and on the way out, it'll be Stack. Has Caddy down the wing. Grimes is pushed ahead of the play, but as you can see, Patton falls into the mark. So that's a bad turnover as far as Richmond are concerned. Just shin that one. Marshall coming into screen. High ball. Marsh comes at it, but... Definitive spoil provided by Foster, and it's over the line and out of bounds. Yeah, it wasn't a great kick from Patton. He had Marshall, who had worked really hard inside 50. He'd lost Nan Curvis, so he could have floated into that pack almost uncontested if it was just favouring him a little more. Josh, you're in. Thank you. So, late call up for Josh Battle. He doesn't arrive. Nan Curvis a little awkwardly. Lambert gets mobbed. The aggression from both sides is terrific. Short put it on the boot. Revolt had two to fight with. They knocked each other over. Play on the call, and the Tigers will love that. Prestia dabs it long, desperate, and wins the ball back away from Castagna to steal as a reflex handball. Commitment from both sides, but Membry didn't get control of the footy. Instead, it's Ross now, but then he fell over. High ball battle. Back to centre half forward. King was the tallest. Grimes got higher, though. Flostone kept coming. Tigers trying to get this game in motion. It's busy on the wing, sweeping through long. This way, that way, through the middle. Oops. And then a rushed blind kick, which isn't going to amount to anything other than a springboard for the Tigers. And then Short is that man. He kicks it long out towards Revolt. Judges it better in the air. Then goes off the ground. That was magnificent stuff. Here's a chance. They've got players at the full of the ball. The Tigers and Edwards is deadly normally. It's a beautiful kick. Lee! 
Pitch goes up, oh. and well done, Carlo. Oh. That was absolutely magnificent. That's as good a full back spoil as you'll see. That's why his teammates were so quick to get over and say well done, because it looked like Lynch had his name on it. I love the way the Tigers kept it live. Jack's Tom kick Lynch. out of the air, and then Edwards involved in getting the ball forward. They just weren't able to capitalise. But this ball is pinging from one end to the other. It's a ripping game of footy on this Saturday afternoon under the roof at Marvel Stadium. Lynch does it well, pushed his opponent out in the ruck work. Cooley, boundary line, throw in. So McIntosh, you can hear Camden doing the ruck work here against Marshall. So this is Marshall's opportunity. And does it well, just lays it down. No one underneath it though. Good play by Clark, got the handball back. Long's been busy, hits it with a big banana bender up towards the wing position. Stack at the fall of the ball. Gresham works hard. King, nicely, steal. Good chip kick. Chance now for Membry. Over the top he goes. Marsh, Kent, goal square, goal, Hill, open goal. Bang, that was great football. Where did Hill come from? Well, that's what you get when you recruit a runner. You get a bloke that can seriously cover territory. He doesn't just have a big tank. He's got toe. He's got speed. And he read this before anyone else. And he saw the space that was open and he just took off. He said, I'll take a risk. It's a 50-50 ball. We've got numbers behind to cover if I'm wrong. But if I'm right, I'm going to make sure that we get a certain goal out of this. And he just left them all standing. Clean hands were the key to first it was King below his knees. Just really clean, memory clean grab. Marsh involved and then you're right Jace, he's got a big tank but he just covers the ground. That high intensity running, his numbers from all reports are, are absolutely off the charts. The ability to run long distances at a high speed. Just about the benchmark in the AFL is Brad Hill. Tyler will be happy with that too. <laughs> I think he is. Yep, yeah, happy, having a bit to say too. Enjoying a break deservedly. Look at the disparity in total disposals in this second quarter. At the moment, it's a 13 point advantage. Justin Martin has started strongly, then a bit quiet since. Short to Higgins. Mind you, he's had eight disposals. Dusty when I look down at the sheet. But not a great impact, Hunter. Yeah, over the top, Coffee have got the fist to it. Jack Higgins is another one that's found plenty of it. He's up to nine possessions. Again, just not a huge impact at this stage, but certainly getting his hands on it. Down to you, Sarah. David Asprey came off the ground about five minutes ago, headed straight down the race, has not returned. No, no torps out of the goal square then. Let's have a look at this. Oh, he's hurt his knee. Strange one, very innocuous, wasn't it? Play goes on here. Billings, paddle. A little bit of confusion as to who that was designed for. Clark just has to submit and cop that, and we'll have a ball up. Almost looked like just a plant leg yeah. while he was putting pressure through it. We'll take another look at that short. Yeah. Big numbers around the footy. Carlisle comes in as the ruckman. Got a mighty fist to it, but Caddy gobbled it up, then lost control. Caulfield disposed of off. Brilliant by Higgins. Won it, gave it. High ball. It's a wobbly one, and... Lynch and Howard must have just competed inside the line. No, it's not outside the line. The so another look at Asprey. Yeah, when he dug in and, and had some pressure put on it, he felt something in the right knee by the looks of it. Let's hope it's nothing serious. Yeah, you do worry about those innocuous ones, don't you? Let's, as I said, hope for the best. Long on the way out again. And the Saints can threaten as Billings marks. Going to take a good kick, and he slices one perfectly along the wing. He ran hard for that, Loney. And he's got it now. He's looking up down the line at Kent, who tells him not to pull the trigger yet, but he does. He came back on a double lead. And Kent runs onto the arc off the left foot. High ball down to Marsh and King. Boston with the spoil, and Broad's onto it. He's trapped. Hand pass. He had a help on the way out. And they need it right now, the Tigers. McIntosh gets the handball off the short. Normally a beautiful user. And he finds Preston. 13 points the margin. Tigers keep it in motion. So Higgins gets it across. Grimes pulls the trigger. Does well. Cotchen now over the top. Higgins again. He's been busy. And just got cleaned up after he got rid of it. And he's a bit sore. 
So Jack Higgins is down on his haunches at the moment. Let's keep an eye on that one. In the meantime, Preston goes out wide. Cooley. He's exactly the bloke you want to have ball in hand at this situation. Decides to go long to Lynch. Was he grabbed? No, says the umpire. Martin at the full of the ball. Twisting, turning, flicks it over his head. Twisting and turning again there was Bolton. Ball in dispute. Hill did well. Went to his knees, got back up, opened it up for his teammates. Hanbury's handball was sensational. Now the Saints are a chance because Hill's got it and not much up in front, so he has to hold the ball. Now he gives it off. Jones. Jones again looks up. In between his teammate. Picked up by Butler. Left foot step. And it's a goal. That's a, could be a game breaker and a voice breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Butler's play was sensational. Great play by Hill. So let's go back to Higgins getting cleaned up. Just a late bump. Wasn't nothing, too much in that. No. Too under war. But Dan Hanabry's handball at half back was that was the start that broke it all open because he was under a little bit of pressure. If, he, handball, th if he just throws it on the boot. Well, then, R Richmond are so well positioned, but because he's able to handball to a runner who's in space, and then Brad Hill, then Seb Ross, then these players get involved in the game, and Butler again with that off-ball run. Jones is kicking inside 50. It looked like it might have just brought the Richmond defenders into it, didn't it, Hutto? A little bit of luck in that, wasn't there? But it ended well for Dan Butler. What a start at his new club. He's happy to talk all about it with his ex-teammates who well, don't seem that interested. He's got eight possessions and a couple of goals next to his name. He'd be very happy talking, I suspect. Higgins having some respite. Equal highest ranked player on the ground. And the Saints kicked the last three after Jack Revolt's goal at the three and a half minute mark got them back to within a point. And Loney, Hill and Butler have kicked the next three. Yeah, back out to 19 points. And eight goals kicked already from the Saints. Great work from... Ruckman to Rover there, and the shape kick for Lynch, who's going to line up for his third after Dan Curvis, and Preston's cohesion was outstanding out of the middle. He's done well, Carlisle. I reckon he's cribbed a good metre and a half over where the mark was actually taken. Lynch covered a lot of territory in that first quarter. He's kicking goals, taking big marks. Now he gets an opportunity. Good history from that spot. He kicked right through the ball. It's not exactly right through the middle, though. He misses to the left. And he tag kick, and it's three goals between these two sides. So let's move it again. Patton forced to play on. Bolton gave him some issues. Certainly not passed yet. And Caddy almost able to win it back. Clark, though, gets the hand pass along the line. Broad played the footy on its merits. Got away from the clutches of Marsh. And suddenly Cotchen's entering 50. And Lambert's handballing over the top. Bolton shapes the kick. And the Tigers get another. Well, the trouble started, Jace, when Ben Patton marked the footy. And he did really well to show some composure not to give it. But then he never backed off the mark. Yeah. So as soon as the umpire called play on, he was immediately under pressure, wasn't he? But this is what they haven't been doing, the Tigers, is actually scoring from these turnovers. And on this occasion, they were able to link up and get it done. So there's the good chase from Bolton, who put the pressure on, and that was important. And then a couple of other contests where they managed to keep the ball just in dispute. And when they do win it, have a look at some slick hand passes here. And then a really good finish from Bolton, who started it off with a really good tackle. It's a great advertisement for applying forward pressure as a small forward, isn't it? Yep. You apply the pressure, you get on the end of a few as well. It's a good finish. And the big, finish. big name Tigers getting amongst it. Uh, Sarah Jones has some, bit, some great news for the Tigers. David Asprey has emerged from the rooms, has his right knee struck. Has spent a bit of time talking to the doctors on the boundary line, but is sitting on the bench. So hopefully he's back out there soon. Thanks, Sarah. Great news. So back in the centre of the ground. Here we go, Prestia, the Tigers on the attack. Revolt gets position in front, did well, brought it to ground. Long goes in, gets the handball away while he's being tackled. Big man Curvis marks it. So the Tigers again go forward. This time it's Lynch, he's going to have to beat a couple. He goes up, off the hands of the pack. Edwards concedes some ground, has kicked it too far. Marsh, full chested, it'll bounce off his chest. Ross, Pooley. Throw to the ground, stalemate, ball up. 
This is a bit more Richmond, though. This is what we saw in the last quarter last week against Hawthorne. Some repeat inside 50s. You start to build the pressure. Still not sure the kicks inside 50 are doing their forwards any favour, though, at times. Kicking to one against two. Caulfield to Clark. Good play. Caulfield gets it back. Goes out wide. Little chip kick. is a good one. And Billings takes the mark. Looks further afield. Needs to be a good kick. And is Loney on centre wing. They are spreading well when they win possession, the Saints. Jones Mark. got the mark as you heard from the umpire and a bit of a shove in the back anyway. Just saw it flash up. Dusty Martin, he's winning plenty of the footy but no score involvements yet, which is what he's been the number one player in the competition for the last few years. So Marshall's the flyer, gets up, couldn't quite hold the mark and it goes over the line for a throw in inside 50 for St Kilda. St Kilda Ruck. So he's now setting himself as more of a permanent forward. Tim and Toby. Dusty Martin. Don't hold. So all 36 players within a kick of this ball by the time it is thrown in. Now Curvis doing the ruck work. Gets the tap again. The fall of the ball. Edwards tries to get it going. Now it spills still, trying to get some room. Gets the handball over the top. Crunch. Great tackle on that occasion from Jack Ross. And the ball will be thrown in. That was a ripper. Deliberate. Yeah. Just handballed straight towards the boundary line there, Loney. And they've blocked this up well. They've stopped the switch. They've made it really tough, and he's going to go back up the line. And he does to Hooley. It's good defensive structure from St Kilda's setup. The Tigers' go to man from this position is always Basher Hooley. And he decides to kick it long and strong. Carlisle over the top. The Saints have got the numbers with the fall of the ball. Long. Just a kick, but the bounce is OK. At the hill. Hill looks further laterally. Oh, he's hurt. Oh, he's been crunched too. So Jack made him earn it with a kick, and I think he's in a bad, bad way here. Has not moved and is... Hold it! Flexing his knee his ankle. Ankle. Ankle it is, yeah. Yeah, this does not look good. So we'll come back to that in a moment. It's been one of their best too. 12 possessions already, Brad Hill. So Hill still unable to get to his feet. Well, that's a good sign. Yeah, it is. Walking under his own steam. Hopefully just a tweak of, a little tweak of the ankle, hopefully, and that's could be the worst of it. So it just pushed off and grabbed down and yeah, rolled the ankle there. You can sometimes get raked over that lower yep. part of the, the ankle bone and it hurts more than rolling easily at times. He's up and running. He's up and running. Yeah, staying out there, which is a really good sign, obviously. Hooley eyeing off the oh, middle. Oh. Nothing for him there. Play on. So down the ground. Go. Oh, oh, up towards the roof here at Marvel. The high ball. The high flyer was Higgins. Didn't mark Cochin. And Higgins bounces back to his feet. Didn't take the mark. Oh. And very nearly kicked the goal. But in the end, didn't do that either. What might have been a couple of times for Jack Higgins. A couple of Trent Cochins just delayed handballs inside 50. So he set up the last goal with Bolton. Just looking really composed when he's got it. Yeah, he's won that to one tiger whose form has been pretty true this year, Trent Cochin. Mark taken by King. He gets up the ground. He helps service Carlos. So 11 points is the margin with two and a half to go in the first half. It seemed like a bit of a nothing kick, but it gets through all the way to memory. And now Gresham has the touch on the kick. It's cleared Loney. Two taller Tigers. And Ross tries to provide the steadying influence, but he missed. It was touch. Billings, new turn. Bouncing back. Caddy made the spoil. Now Billings tries to get it back on his own terms, and he succeeds. Hand pass to Loney. And now Ross with a delicate little kick, which was a bit of a stinker in the end. It went out of bounds. Sarah. Bradley Hill has gone down right, off nine. the ground and down Bradley into the rooms. Hopefully right. he's okay with that angle. So they'll probably strap back, it up, back. restrap it. Yep. Yeah, last two back minutes, so 20 odd minutes to get themselves sorted out. Even though he was a bit proppy, uh, it was good to see him up and running and uh, and staying out there when he needed to. Yeah, nothing broken at least to Jason in that situation, you'd think. As Marshall goes up, takes a strong mark. So the Saints have got a chance here with 1.45 on the clock. Just tried to be a little bit too cute. Their last couple opportunities. Billings around on his right and Ross on the left. 
So the Ruckman does what a Ruckman should do, just kick it long and strong up towards full forward. But the Tigers had numbers back and a beautiful mark by Asprey. So good to see him back on the ground with the knee strapped and getting up and taking the mark. Cooley, over the top he goes. Ross has been good this quarter. Great intercept, brought on by Jones. Last roll of the dice, you think, for the Saints here. A minute 10 on the clock. So Loney's going to bang it in long. No, he doesn't. He just lowered his eyes, and the kick was a beauty. Yeah, that was a great kick, Roy. It was just really clever, because if he looked up and he looked long, he would have seen Max King, who is a beacon, and draws a footy. But he was surrounded by three or four Richmond defenders. So just at the last minute, lulled the Richmond defence into thinking he was going long, and he just pulled it to memory. But he's got the journey from here if he, if he flushes it. Massive kick, Ed. It's a huge kick, this one. The margin, as you can see, 11 points in the last 30 seconds. Membry comes in, and there's going to be another play here. Up goes King, couldn't quite take the mark. Full of ball, Kent, trying hard. He's booted out of bounds on the full, though. And that should just about see us. If the Tigers can hit a teammate, that'll do us. And what a game we've had. You can see Hill limping in. He'll get that uh, ankle re-strapped, but uh, he's still a bit sore and propping. Dan back to the night. So I'll see what happens once he cools off. Rui, you know, situations going in like that. Once you cool off, particularly at half time, can sometimes can be hard. Yeah, they'll keep him on the bike and keep him moving. So the Tigers looking for the siren here, and quite appropriately, Jack Ross, who's had a ripping second term, gets it to Hooley, and that'll do us. And what has been a very entertaining first half of football here at Marvel Stadium between St Kilda and Richmond's the home side, the uh, Saints who lead by 11 points, 8-2-50 to 6-3-39 at halftime. Yes, Ronnie, halfway through your day of football too. Halftime. Richmond need to flex their muscles and go hard. Can the Saints keep it going? Fascinating second half of football from Marvel Stadium. High scoring too, Ed, which we're enjoying. 11 points is the margin as we get going again and Koch and we know how quickly and smart they were out of the middle in the first bounce and they're about to head forward again. Castagna found Caddy, worked his way into the clear. Dustin Martin to come up to the footy. Patton got the spoil. Higgins has been good. Castagna didn't get a huge amount on the footy. Ooh. It got away from Carlisle. Wow. It could easily have been a goal. Castagna kicked two goals, one in the last quarter. Could easily have kicked three goals last week. And it looks a bit more comfortable with the ball in the air based on that evidence, Carlo. As the Saints you try and swing out of defence, but uh, they haven't got out just yet, as you saw. Cochin again. Well, he's trying to lead the way. Castagna, they just stay ahead of the game. Although well, pressed his kick smothered. That's a throw. A little bit too much scoop on that one. Up I says two of us called it. Press is going, we both got it wrong. <laughs> Just a little bit too much scoop on it, that one. So, chance now. The big marshal goes up, did well. Controlled the air and the ball. Roved his own possession, if you like. And the kick was a good one to Gresham. Next kick important. Gresham tries to thread the needle. He goes to Jones. Just had a bit of pressure coming the other way. Ball hits the ground. Flushed it over the top of it. He's in a bit of trouble. He's dragged it back in. And by letting it go, will bounce. Yeah, he just needed to be a bit stronger over that one, Zach Jones. I know he's almost trying to get out of the way in his teammate in the end. But once you commit to, to getting in that spot, you've got to make sure you finish the play. So Jones goes hard. Now Curvis gives him a body slam over the top. Came off the top rope there, didn't he? He's playing a lot of inside, Zach Jones. You know, when he was up at Sydney, it was predominantly wing stuff. Yeah. With obviously Kennedy and Parker. He's thrived on, yeah, he's he's thrived on the roll. Having he? a really good year. So here we go. Marshall gets front spot, knocks it down. Edwards does nicely, gets the handball out. McIntosh is still in the danger zone here. It's bobbling around. Picked up by Loney. He's crunched into the ground by Baker. But the Saints have picked up another 20 metres. So directly in front of the Saints goal, 35, 40 metres out directly in front, as I said. So King does the ruck work this time. Free kick, Saints. And 50. No 50. No 50. Oh. Great, Shane. No 50. Move out, please. Try and grab the well, you can hear him say don't give away 50. Maybe he felt it was uh, overplayed a little bit. 
but they continue to put pressure on the Tigers. I've been impressed the way they've run, the way they've hunted the footy. So Jack Loney gets his chance to get the first goal of this all-important third quarter. You can see Koch thought there was a bit of mayo on the first one. He would have hated the second one then. So a massive shot of goal here. Loney coming in. You couldn't get a better picture than that. Fox footy brings you a better shot than what the goal umpire had. And Loney says, thank you very much. The umpire says, all clear. And the Saints get the all-important first goal of third term. Ten possessions and a couple of goals. Just running through the pack, running with the football. Cochin not happy. There wasn't much in that little push. Didn't need to be done, though. You can just see the pressure that the Tiger players are under because they're not getting the game on their terms. Or in. And this is... This is really good from a St Kilda perspective to be able to do this to, and to get frustration out of players like Trent Cochin. Yeah, well, you can tell that they're just not quite firing on all no. cylinders. And when you've been to the heights that they have, Richmond, you spoke about motivation during the week, well, then anything short of your absolute best is, is going to bring a level of frustration to it. And we saw a little bit bubble out there from Trent Cochin. She was a marginal free kick in the first place, yep. wasn't it? Well, he had a hold of the arm, I guess. That's a Martin into the centre for this bounce. 16 points. That's all that matters right now for Damien Hardwick. It's a big challenge. Marshall, combat with Nan Curvis, who followed up his work. He's given them real aggression out of the middle. It's been an excellent tool. Pressed in to Martin. Pressed here again. They close in and force the error. Marshall, the handball to Butler, to Ross. And that was a critical tackle applied by Hooley. So he had the handball option too, Loney outside him if you haven't seen him. It's a bit of a 50 50 kick. Hanbury couldn't stop short. He's on the march, and we know he can kick long, but he also was able to have his vision low enough to spot Tom Lynch. And that, that's a really clever kick because I think a lot of the defenders started to run back thinking he's a long kick, he's had a bounce, he's going to ping it from 50. He just bought himself time to steady. He saw that Tom Lynch was a few metres clear on the lead. He just popped it in front of him. Absolutely perfect. Tom Lynch outstanding, particularly in the first quarter. Two goals, one for the game so far. He had that opportunity in the second turn to make it three. So he's got same again here from 40 metres out. And again. Well below average connection on Tom Lynch's standards. He doesn't even score. To see Brad Hill back out there. The purple Sox, of course, it's Matty's match, and at the moment, the Saints led by 16 points. Carlisle marks, and they try and pick their way through. Coffee was almost off. It was an eight metre kick. <laughs> Lucky not to be called play on. Purple Sox, Hutto, the, uh, the purple jumpers got caught on the other side of the world, weren't able to get here on time, unfortunately. So Ross. Hill, Clark kick up to the wing, just softened the kick, trying to get the advantage of Marshall. And Curvis puts his fist into it, and it's over and out. So vital next passage here for St Kilda, with Lynch missing that goal, in a 12-point turnaround, and suddenly 16 points becomes 22 in a game with a quarter and a half to go. Uh, this next period of play is so, so important. And Curvis has knocked up, put himself on the line today. He's played a great game of football. Edwards, long kick. Lynch has got the front spot. Up he goes. Punched from behind from Carlisle. Good play. Caulfield gets the handball going. The Saints run it out. Next kick is important. It's a beauty. And the mark has been taken by Battle. Now, Battle has players around him. Goes for the handball out wide. Kent did well. Billings. Over the top it goes. Marsh. Little handball inside. Sebros has to wait. It was smothered. Good little toe poke away there by Bolton. Coming back, coming back, and it's on. Saints ball. Don't give away 50. Don't give away 50. turnover because they were about to rebound there. So Battle's got the free kick here, and they've still got holding by the jumper. I don't know. What do you have to do for 50? He was upset. Nick Floston. So battles 55 out. Carlisle's drifted down and he's got a good one-on-one -on -one here with Cochin. 
Wants it high in the air. Watch for Membry. And that's where he's gone to the front of the square. Membry up high. Second grab. Got it. Gee, that was poor organisation in the Tigers' defence. He was there in space. And no one got close enough. None of the talls got close enough. He's got a terrific standing jump, this guy. So we see the turnover here. So oh, it's a, it's a sling, sling behind play. I don't know what Nick Foster is carrying on about. I'm whinging about getting pinged there. But really poor organisation to allow that to happen. So here's this vital goal we talked about. He's good from here. He's hit the post from one shot at this end already, but no mucking around with that one. That is a big goal, and the Saints get the lead they needed to. They've kicked the first two goals of this all-important third quarter, and they're out to a 22-point margin. There was enough numbers for Richmond when you look at the defenders that are down there filling space, but quite often that lulls you into a false sense of security. And yep. Memory just popped out. He, he identified where the space was, and you can tell Baker, he, he realised late that this is a bit of a mismatch. The kick was probably a second or two too late, but remember, he's still good enough to get up and take it. So, love the way they're running hard. They're playing good, consistent footy today. The question mark is, can the Tigers answer? Have they got something to lift with here to get themselves back in the contest? Richmond won the last four games against the Saints since that memorable 67-point win you had back in 2017, Nick. Uh, well, that, that was the Tigers. Yeah, that was the last game they lost for 2017. They won every game on the way to a premiership in that year. So, I'd like to think we gave them a footy order that day. They went to school and then they uh, they never looked back. They still haven't thanked us, though. Just depends which way you look at things, doesn't it? 22 points to margin. This emergency now needed for the Tigers. Baker may have given away the free kick. He has yeah. to Butler. Fair decision. King. He's the main target here. Masters also down there. Oh. And he's got it. He was the only man left standing, really. And Marsh, the former pie in front of goal, can have a crucial shot to take them out to a game-high 28 point advantage. I love the way he just nonchalantly turned around as if to say, of course I'll mark it. <laughs> Jonathan Marsh. the goal last week. He was playing defensively on Jeremy Howe. He's right in front and he puts it right through. And the passion is there from the Saints. Almost five goals in this now. That's six of the last seven goals to St Kilda. See, one of the things that's really impressed me, really, is when they go forward, all of the St Kilda forwards, particularly the talls, are engaging their opponents. So everyone is getting body on body and you're not allowing two or three defenders to come over the top. So in the end, you're getting one-on-one -on -one contest because everyone's worried about their own man. I'm really impressed the way they're working for each other, the Saints. They're almost going away from the traditional movement of a forward yeah. and just locking on and engaging the Richmond defence because quite often what has made Richmond so good is their ability to read when to, when to defend really strongly and when to zone off and assist. But if your forward's just staying with you, well, then you've got no choice but defend one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone engages, makes it a contest, and they're not allowing intercept marks. And importantly, 11 goals too. Good conversion. They're rewarding themselves for, with the effort that they're putting in. Nine marks to one this quarter, St Kilda's way. And six of the last seven goals of the game. The Saints lead by 28 points. Presti has to get the Tigers going. Long just tries to keep it in front of him. Does well. Now gets it a second time. Over the top it goes. Canterbury knocked over. Play on says the umpire. Good call. Prestia. And ball up. And just to illustrate that role that Jonathan Marsh is doing, he's, he's pretty much playing as a defensive forward on Dylan Grimes and it's kept him busy. Only two intercepts and no intercept marks for Dylan Grimes, who we know is one of the best. Battle's living up to his name. He wants to fight everyone out there at the moment. So Battle and McIntosh will do the ruck work the meter, here. One meter. Thank you. He's got the adrenaline flowing at the moment, Josh Battle. So this is two sort of ruck rovers going out of boys, isn't it? From the old days. And I couldn't even be bothered picking out a free kick. It's a not legitimate ruck one anyway. So the ball comes in at the centre of the ground. It's picked up by Baker. Ross. He's been excellent today so far. 
High up and under. Revolt, Lynch, and Carlo was the man who got pushed in the back and had ice for the ball and pulled in an absolute ripper. Hill. Tigers have got the numbers. And now they've got the chance to get it across to Hooley, who'll set things up. And he'll try to at least, takes it all the way back to Caddy. Dusty is making a move out to this side of the ground, which is on it, although the kick hangs for a while. He got Ross where he wanted him to be. Yeah, he's clever body work from Dusty. It's an aggressive kick into the middle, asked a lot of Hooley, who got crunched, it gets through, that's Richmond for you. Thump on Baker, Saints defence need to be on guard now. Higgins fired out the handball, Lynch pops it up, top of the square, anything could happen, and it fell nicely for Stack, who runs in a crucial goal for the Tigers. The boys, Dustin Martin just makes things happen, doesn't he? Yeah, it was a risky kick into the middle of the ground, course, but, yeah. but you know what? They need to take some risks. They need to make a few things happen. And it looks like Sydney Stack, who started the first half down back, made a couple of errors. He struggled to get involved. He's gone forward, got himself a goal, which is good. But then it was just a legitimate contest. It was a strange old kick from Tom Lynch. He was about to have a shot, then he thought, oh, there's options, I'll chip it. Really went to grass, but Stack was Johnny on the spot, picked it up, and, and they needed that goal. I mean, if St Kilda had have kicked that one, they'd probably break the game open. So Dustin Martin just rolled the dice. This is the first play of the day. This is Dustin Martin. Keep an eye on him here up against Seb Ross. And just crunches in, gets Zach Jones, opens up, and they have a goal on the board in the first 12 seconds. So Martin's obviously the man. Of course he is. He's a superstar of the competition. And he opened it up beautifully on that occasion. Sometimes he's just got to have a go. And now the Tigers have got a bit of momentum about them. Here they go. Dusty's at full forward. He pushes out his opponent at the fall of the ball. This is going to be a vital tackle. It's a good tackle too. Christine that drags his opponent down. And the Tigers get a ball up 40 metres out directly in front. It's been a committed challenge to Dustin Martin, hasn't it? Seb Ross has played with him on ball. Wilkie when he goes up forward. And they're doing a solid job. Marshall drags it out. Just got it out in time. Tigers through Bolton, ball bobbling around, high tackle and a couple of crunches there. And as a result of that, it's the Saints who will get the relieving kick through Loney, who comes out wide. Patton runs the defensive 50, not much on, so he has to go short, looking for King. McIntosh cut across the front, couldn't hold it. Gresham was good and hard at it, and the tackle on Grimes results in a ball run. Some sort of quite a state, just the eight disposals so far, but others have stepped up to the four. 68 to 46, 22 points to margin. As it said, Tigers just looking to surge a little here. Got control back of the ball just in the last couple of moments. Potch in a hand pass, bit of a setup really for Asbury. They cough it up again. Butler saw off one tackle, looks up. Broad is playing goalkeeper, so he had to wait till Hill arrived, and he did arrive. Kicked it forward in a rush though. Tigers uh, down there in the form of Trent Koch. He needed to get back to mob it up because it was his hand pass that he actually telegraphed to put them under pressure in the first place. Careful kick into the back pocket. And Broad. Get the full stretch. A hand pass over the top to short. Have to be sharp with the hands here. Drives back to short. High ball to the wing. Lynch v Carlisle. They both had some good moments this afternoon. Intriguing contest. Martin sprawled out of the Marvel Stadium. Turf. Interesting handball from Ross. Went straight back to Lynch. The cruelest of bounces. Revolt happy to share the glory with Higgins. They've kicked two in a row. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. It was just surge. Hutto surged the whole way up the ground. Nothing really all that pretty. You can see Nathan Broad at half back. He, he used his legs. He tried to get that game going. The handball chain. This is just a scrap. You've, you've got a feel for Dougal Howe. He's got front position, which is where he should be. But as soon as this kick leaves Tom Lynch's boot, you know he's going to get that nasty bounce straight over the top. Nothing he can do about it. Very unselfish of Jack. He probably could have turned around and kicked the goal himself, but set it up for Jack Higgins and back-to-back -back goals, which they desperately needed. And just was an agricultural handball from, uh, I think it was Seb Ross in yeah, that pack. Yep. yep.
Yeah, it was an interesting one there. The times where you, you probably just want to take the tackle, particularly when you know you've got the, the numbers around the contest. And even if you get pinged for holding the ball, you've got time to set up behind yeah. the footy. So a turnover there from the Saints and the reigning champions show why they've won two of the last three grand finals. Two quick goals, Stack and Higgins both in the goal square, basically. And they're starting to run now, the Tigers. Big Dan Curvis goes into the ruck. Almost to Edwards. Still dived in, but it was Cochin who wanted it more. Prestia gets it out to Caddy. The big names are starting to lift now. Prestia, the best and fairest. Grant, thrown to the ground. That was a great tackle coming in there by Gresham. So the Saints have now got the chance. Up towards the half forward flank position. Grimes with a big punch from behind. Battle. The Hoyt kick. Which way will it bounce? It'll bounce for King. He gets the sit and the bounce and the kick to the hot spot. No one there for the Saints, though. Awkward bounce. Now they've got the chance. Butler grabbed, pushed. Lost and thrown into the ground. And a ball up. Well played by the Saints. Oh, a little fumble there from Jack Higgins. It could have been very, very costly. Gets helped out by his teammates. So no love lost between those two. Vloston and Battle having their own little war there. That's in the back, is it? No, umpire said they rolled him just at the right time. Umpire's letting it go. Long. Ross. Over the line, out of bounds, throw in. Important little phase here. Just the ability to, to build some pressure in your part of the ground. 16 points between these two sides. And Curvis from behind. That's the tap to the front, Gresham, Billings, Steele, saw off the first tackle, oh, Gresham, thumbs initially, high ball back from Steele, Ross underneath it, didn't mark it, fisted it, Hill, the company in revolt, hand pass from Marsh, can someone get it together, Edwards can, but the hand pass was instant and as a result was without control, Loney, oh he's decked. So it's downfield, and how important that might prove. They've given away a few silly free kicks, mm. haven't they, under pressure, the Tigers? It's just sense a little bit of frustration yeah, about very some of their defenders. So. Very much so. Now Grimes, as if the Saints have just got under their skin a little bit. Wouldn't Dan Butler love to kick his third here? He'll take his time. You probably think he's, he looks like he's going to try and kick this around the corner. He's going to have to strike this perfectly because he's a fair way out from goal. Maybe that in three rounds last year for the Tigers, but only seven overall. Squeezed out in the end. What an asset he's been so far for St. Oh. 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 love the look of that one sailing between the sticks. Dan Butler, what a start to his career at St. Kilda. And what an afternoon against his old side. Three goals won. And that hurts Damien Hardwick. Oh, he measured it perfectly, Rui. Really. He sat there, he held the ball the way he needed to. The, the marks in yeah. field were very close. He knew he only had one or two steps. It was really late from Grimes, unnecessary. And this is as well defended as you can possibly yeah. do it. Two Richmond players playing inside that actually charge and try to get a smother on. You don't see it defended that well every time. So here's... Perfect kick. Execu executed the kick and executed the timing perfectly before they got there. It's had a huge impact. Really squeezed out because of the plethora of small forwards they've got at Richmond. Just reminding him of what he can do, Rui, which he'd be very, very happy with. Have a look at that. Second highest ranked player on the ground. You let the wrong one go, he's saying. <laughs> well, he's probably not saying that, but he's loving it anyway. He's certainly trying to prove it, that's for sure. Hado, as we go back into the centre of the ground, the Saints get that goal. Lead by 22 points, but now it's McIntosh. <laughs> Caddy, little chip forward. Cochin goes up, takes the mark. 55 out. Has Lynch. Lynch in the square decides to go out to Revolt, who marks 45 out. Now, it kicked one from the boundary line earlier in the game. Three minutes into the second turn. He hasn't had many opportunities, Ed. Just the four possessions thus far. So a big game. kick here coming up, obviously, for the Tiger champion. Came into the game with back-to-back -back games without goals. He's kicked 1-1 one -one today so far. From 45 out, he's got plenty of distance. And it just fades to the left-hand side and through for a behind. 
Do you feel like the connection has been better today, Nick? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, we're still talking about 26 in 550s in almost three quarters. So, not a stack of footy, but they have looked better with the ball in hand. And yet they find themselves 21 points in arrears of the Saints. They've worked their way up to the wing again. Steele. Just under three minutes remaining. Placed it along the line for Marshall. Broad came late. The spoil was affected. Lambert. Now Ross with an aggressive handball. It could have gone anywhere. It went to long. He wore the tackle well. Clark. Stymied but got it moving. Patton. Advantage. Billings. Eyes up just for a low pass to the big guy. Marshall. Oh, there was danger about that. And it still might prove crucial. As the Tigers get a high tackle on the show. Yeah, it was a... It was a risky play to bring it into the middle of the ground. Short did so well there, put his nose over it. Held them up, though. That's one thing from the St Kilda point of view. So Short has to create his own momentum, which he can do. Darts and kicks long. It's a high ball. They'll come from all angles, and Lynch didn't get there until way too late. Wilkie paid the mark and claiming that he maybe could have got a 50 as well. But... Poor option from Short in the end. He, he had Caddy who presented for the short pass perfectly. Could have linked up. Chose to bomb it long on his left and straight to the opposition. So a minute 40 left. Oh, and Gresham's hurt himself. Uh oh, this could be a dangerous last minute. Gresham is down. You can see him there. And with a minute 25 on the clock, can the Tigers get one back? Almost a handball in from Lynch to Revolt running through. A hand on it just stopped it. Saints have to fight hard here. They can't concede a goal. Ball up. Facial injury? Yeah, I reckon a poke in the eye. Let's have a look. Play on! Oh, I might have got a stop in the eye for that, anyway. Oh, beautiful mark. So, oh, Marshall. Yeah, played, played well, battle. There's a battle out there. As you said, it's been a big quarter for him, too, Rue, hasn't it? He's been right involved in everything. He's got the ball now with 50 seconds. So the Saints just don't need to concede if they could get one here. What a bonus it would be, but it's not. And that's almost 50. It is 50. So a stupid play there. The players have touched it. It was really clever body work from, from Broad. He, he had the bigger king on him, but just a good bump out at the right time. So a big 45 seconds or 40 seconds now for the Tigers if they could get one here. And they're going to get the shot at the goal. Big Dan Curvis did it beautifully. The kick was perfect. And he will line up from 30 metres out. I'll tell you what he did do a show. A good pair of hands. He reached out in front. Made it impossible for the spoil from behind. Took it in one grab. Just as good as any key forward playing the game. That mark. 20 year old Marshall will be hurting right now. Not in particular if, uh, if Big Dan Curvis kicks the goal. Yeah, gave away the 50. And then Curvis has kicked 25 goals, 16, game number 73. This is a huge kick for the Tigers' season. And the big man stands tall with five seconds, four seconds, three seconds on the clock. And that'll get him to three-quarter time, and the Tigers are right back in it. Let's have a look at the mark in the first place. The force the 50 wasn't touched. Yeah, even if, it, even it's if it was, it's instantaneous as you take the mark. That's going to be paid a mark every, every single, single time. time. That's a packed mark all day. All right, so 15 points of difference. We're going to be in for a belter of a last term. So Asprey's kick was an absolute grip. Yeah, pulled it beautifully, just into the space. I love how he stretched out to take the mark, though. Look like you, Jason. Oh, he's, his arms are twice <laughs> as long as my little stubby things. <laughs> He used to feast on the Tigers too, Jason, didn't he? He's had a good day back in the team, isn't he? Yeah. And Ruckman leads the ranking points. And importantly, hitting the scoreboard there. And the cusp of three-quarter time. Goes up against Marshall. Wins one more. In fact, he grabbed it out of the ruck. And then the siren sounds. And we are all set up. The reigning champions really challenged. Coming off a draw and a loss. Questions asked for the first time in a long time about Richmond, and the Saints have really taken it up to them today. But we've seen in a high scoring game that. Because I'm not sure the Tigers are playing well enough, but they do have some stars that can lift. Yeah, so Revolt out of the square. Dustin is deep as well. They shuffle in the middle man, Curvis. 
got the tap, and the wingman come through. McIntosh crashed to the ball. Spills St Kilda's way. Potent kick from Billings. Got them deep. Marshall, Butler almost. And now Baker, King, release hand pass. Didn't get much on it. Tries with the boot. Hanabry, King again to Butler. Can he kick his fourth? That would have been an amazing start for the Tigers. How slick were the hands in traffic there? Makes King look like he clawed it. He just, he just <laughs> moped it in, didn't he? So McIntosh for the back pocket tries to launch the Tigers. Lynch didn't get the timing right. Carlisle did. Cotchin got a hand pass in to Martin. And now Hooley there on the advance through the middle. He delayed the give to Prestia to give them every possible chance. They're just staying ahead of the game and they're dangerous. Prestia, not the perfect delivery, but not bad. Left boot end on end. And the wrong side of the big post. See, they look ominous, the Tigers. When they get that handball game going through the middle of the ground, that's what they've been trying to build the past couple of weeks. Hasn't happened enough today, though. Because yeah. what a great passage of play it was too. There was a tackle, a tackle, a yeah, tackle. Just yeah. getting the handball out, the momentum going forward. Oh, that's a terrible kick out in the middle. The trouble is, Jack Rewalt was 10 metres clear on the lead. Didn't have to be a bullet pass. Any sort of chip kick gets to him. Unfortunately, it was a poor kick and he had to snap it on his left. So the Tigers got to kick three goals more to win this game. Boston on centre wing, called the play on, he bombs it long, looking for Lynch, rebound, up he goes, couldn't quite take the mark, thumped to the ground. I fend off, I fend off, St Kilda. So Billings gets it for the don't argue, have a look at this one, up he goes. Started worrying about self-preservation once he got up there. <laughs> well, Howard did pretty well with the thump from behind as well, so the Saints. What can they do on centre wing? Floston fights through. There you go, sees he threw it. Marshall take the free kick for the Saints. Well, we know how strong Richmond finished last week. Yep. And the Saints are the only team to have lost this year so far when the team's been in front at three-quarter time. That was oh, around one. Saints fans will be thrilled to hear that, Hutto. Thank you for reminding them. So big name Curvis brings the ball out broad. Oh, Hurley, oh. they knocked it up. Here's the chance. Hanabry flicks the ball back. Clark, can he get back on top of it? No, Hurley. Dragged it in. Dragged it in. Has to be gone. Oh. Yeah, but he's done well, Hurley, because now they've got, they've got time to get their numbers back. That was a horrible He panicked turnover. in the first place, though. Absolute so, panic hand pass. Hunter Clark has it inside the square. King gives us short lead. Now it's up. And then Kervis from behind off hands. Floston, can the Tigers repel? Great stuff by Prestia, just over the head. Loney does well to hold it up, we'll have a ball up on half forward flank. Yeah, full chest, full chest of tackle there from Wilkie, opened himself up. 15 the margin there, Curvis the tap to Cochin. He's trying hard to dig in for Richmond and generate some run from the stoppage again he's involved looking out with martin and pressed here and hooley all big tiger names and so is revo momentarily held by howard play on the call so play on he does got it through to lynch he was looking for mates he had none he had no support whatsoever on that occasion and he's trapped well played and a short pass from wilkie is to caulfield just get the feeling if the Saints can kick the first goal, it might be a bridge too far for the Tigers to come back. But this first goal was so critical. Caulfield up and under. King got loose of Asprey but couldn't take the mark. Pressed out. Getting plenty of the footy. His 23rd disposal was a rushed one. It's marked by Caulfield. Had no one around him. Kicks for Marshall. The spoil was late and effective. But the ball stays in. Loney. He's got Marsh on his outside. He's confronted, so just hacks it. And out of bounds would be a pretty decent result here for the Saints. Yeah, they've gone to King a few times. He's been. He just hasn't quite been able to work his way into the game today. He's learning the lesson that really good defenders are going to take your strength away, and that's your ability to run and launch. Still applying great pressure. Look at the tackle numbers already in the fourth term. Curvis, held out Marsh, Kent, managed to get ball to boot, was it touched? It was not, and the Saints strike first in the last. 
And don't they love it? Oh, that oh. tells the story. That tells the story. He knows how critical that first goal was. We're just talking about the pressure and the tackles in the fourth term. What they have done, St Kilda, is take time and space away from the Tigers whenever they have won the ball back. Have a look at him getting just right underneath Marshall for the tap. And a great finish. He just waltzes through almost unopposed in your forward 50. I'm sure if it was a breakdown in communication I'm from I'm the Tigers. But it, was it? it did have its well set up defensive side, but I'm sure you want to be allowing that much space, particularly onto his left foot as well. And get around him. Marshall Membry doing the ruck work on that occasion. Did well to get the body in and just bring the ball straight down. So Dean Kent does it again. Look at the scores from stoppages here. Six goals to the Saints have done well. Out of the centre, Seb Ross was grabbed nearly high. Double team, the umpire ball it up. That's almost the difference in the, in the game, isn't it, in the scores in the game? A number of times they've actually got their hands on the ball first at stoppages, the Tigers, but they've just been closed down by St Kilda. That's been super impressive. Saints route. Goal away from wrapping this game up. Plenty of time, though. Stack. Probably the ball there. Good play by Clark. Tried to finesse the kick. Edwards. Ross has been very good today. And it's coming back. Steel for St Kilda. Next play is so important. And it comes out to Hanbury. Hanbury just held it up nicely. Marsh. Does enough to knock the ball out. And a stalemate. And the Saints will be as happy to just knock some time off the clock here as anything else. So Go Brett on, Ratton. What a huge result it would be for him. In his first season of coaching the Saints to knock off the reigning champions here at Marvel Stadium. Pushing the back. No, says the umpire. And Crawford gets up and takes the mark. Yeah, Ross again there. So he, he had the bad handball turnover just a moment before. He just hasn't quite gotten up to the pace or the, right, the way Richmond want to play yet. Crawford's kick just put his teammates under a bit of pressure, but they got out of jail. That kick is not going to be good enough, but it just held on enough for Crawford to rove it nicely. Had the Billings. Billings chips up towards Marsh. Couldn't quite hold the mark off the hands of the pack. They've got it though, the Saints. Steele does well. Handball's out wide. Can they get going now? Next kick, so important. And decide to go out to Hill. He's the right man for the job. Hill looks up, chips it nicely, lets his teammate Membry run onto it. He plays it conservatively. But the Saints get a better look from Clark into the pocket. And it was well weighted. And Marshall tumbles to the 50, ground. 50. And it is 50. And that is not going to improve the mood of the Richmond defence or their coach, Damien Hardwick. Clear it out. It will be a 27-point margin here. This couple is given away Nick Twostone. They've been very much frustrated down back. A number of free kicks downfield for late contact. Just not quite getting the game played the way they want it played, the Tigers. And the frustration has borne out and resulted in a certain goal here. So Rowan Marshall will enjoy this. It's a smart from Marshall. Yep. That's the time go. Every second gets them closer to victory. There's 21 points. Becomes 27 with under 10 minutes to go. Oh, this is stunning. Fell well short against Collingwood last week after being so good against the Bulldogs. Uh, they've been right up for the challenge this afternoon against the reigning premiers. So the Tigers are now, if it all goes as we expect, will be 1-3. Their least successful start to a season since 2016. And with a shortened season, it's become so important. Yeah, just that draw in round one. It's the only joyful. Two, yeah. Draw in round, round two. two so. yeah. Yeah. Ed's just trying to give Colin with the victory, I think. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Hasn't been the resumption of play they've been looking for, the Tigers, has it? Wow. Well, that, 
that tells the story, doesn't it? Well, and, and quite often that's, that's based on how the game's being played. So because St Kilda have been able to kick mark quite a lot this quarter, it, it means that you just can't get any pressure on. The only time you can get pressure on is when the ball's actually in motion. now and Curvis over the top. Cochin underneath that. <laughs> the Saints are still eager. Double tackle. Jack Steele, eight tackles this afternoon as well as 21 disposals. Ross straight ahead. Spoil from Hull. It's the dangerous situation the Tigers defenders find themselves in. Austin darting back onto the right. Got the kick away, and it just clears Caddy. Slight misjudgment. Short will run onto it, though. Billings tried to track him down. Caddy can't get past Steele. He's knife tackle. They get out of it, though, through Nan Curvis. And short. Cotchin continuing to spread here, doing his best. Off the left boot. Into the pocket. Here's Jack Revolt with a fly. Howard went with him. Dustin Martin, clear, it was trademark Dusty, the kick. It's just a little bit of rusty Dusty there, isn't it? It's not quite in his absolute best on his return. The, mo the move to get clear wasn't bad, though. Yeah, he found the space well enough. Just won't have the connection with his teammates, though. 27 points, the margin. Carlisle versus Revo. Lambert. He's another Richmond player that hasn't had the same impact this year, isn't he? He's had what, nine disposals today. Been one of the great stories in their in their rise. Caulfield at the back. Hill. Really important, particularly in the first half. Jack Ross from the pocket. Lynch, both hands to it. Bolton, it's high. And it's straight. So, glimmer of life for the Tigers. Still plenty of time, Hutto. The way they were able to get their game going last week, the Tigers, if they had a kick straight in that last quarter against Hawthorne, they would have been able to put some real scoreboard pressure on. So, not the time to put the cue in the rack here for either team. One more quick one here for Richmond. That's a really interesting. Good slick hands from Jack Revolt there. It's a couple great finishes from Bolton this game. Saw him lay one across the body in the second term from a similar position. Yeah, they wouldn't want to go to sleep. No the way. Saints, they cannot allow that effort to drop off one bit. Particularly when you know it's Richmond. You know they can score quickly. You know they can get their surge game going and pile on goals. And they've missed some shots in the last quarter last week that they oh, yeah. normally would not miss. Revolt and Lynch to stand that. They just haven't got the clear or clean takeaways from the middle of the ground, particularly the centre bounces, the Tigers. This is where the Saints have been very, very good. So here we go. Eight minutes to go in this game. Marshall goes up, gets a beautiful tap. It's down to Seb Ross, who boots it up towards the 450 position. The Tigers are going to get the ball here and run it out, but where do they go to next? There's not much on, so they decide to go straight up the the line, and as we said, there wasn't much on, and Patton gets back and takes the mark. So he will milk the clock. There's no need. Carlisle leads in the centre, decides to kick conservatively up the line. Membry does well, brings the ball to the ground. Asprey tries to get out to Hooley, now does. Hooley finds some space. Great kick. Beautiful kick. And the mark has been taken by Costanio, who flicks it on. They need to get it going. Dustin Martin bangs it long out towards Lynch. Beautiful kick from Dustin Martin. Well, it's sit well. Lynch has got it. Further ahead, he has his teammate in Bolton. Bolton now, 50 out. Chips looking for Revolt. One grab, two grab in the back. No, says the umpire. So Long's got it for St Kilda. Good closing speed, Dougal Howard there on the lead. He blasted away. It's going to come back, though. Caddy through to Hooley. And again, misses the mark. So an opportunity for the Saints to launch. Martin happy to win it back, though. Short looking for something. Had to go by hand back. It goes to Asprey. High ball. Lynch's name is blasted over this one. Long was up to the challenge. And the Saints live again in defence. 
Good careful ball use from Hunter Clark and get it out of the chest of Jack Billings in the back pocket. If you go conservative here with the footy too, you're just going to hem yourself in in and allow Richmond to just pile on inside 50. So you can't lose your dare if you're St Kilda. One more goal will start to put some doubts in the minds of the Saints too. If the Tigers can win the ball back. High one to the wing. Full commitment grinds over the top. Marshall back to Marsh. And then to half forward, too tall for Loney. Asprey, short, stretched it out. Bit of a standoff there for Foster. Over the top to Edwards. His eyes looking up. Aggressive is their mode at the moment. But Marshall read the play and read it well. Did he play on? He has. Oh. 50. Hadn't gone over the mark. Again, it wasn't a great kick coming out of defence. They just haven't been able to find space or the time to deliver the ball the way they'd like to, the Tigers. Marshall uncertain about where to head next, and Marsh pops up. And, and whilst they will take time off the clock when they can, they need to look to score another goal, the Saints. They've still got to keep that attacking mindset when the opportunity presents. That's what Marsh is doing here. Hoping for King or the fly from the side. What a game he's played. He's come in and taken the mark. Kent can kick his third Third goal, in fact, it's memory. 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 It's memory. And this beautiful is where he has to... up here, isn't it? Yeah. Just judges it beautifully. Knee to the side of his opponent. Great mark. One grab. Seven. He just has to trust those kicking skills. You know, that one year where they deserted him a little in front of goal, but... Generally a beautiful kick, and he can kick through here, which he does. The Saints are almost there. Twenty-seven points the margin now. Just gets a good run coming in from the side of the pack. No contact on the body from his opponent. Able to run and jump. Good clean hands. He's got a great vertical leap. Probably allows him to play like a key forward, even though he's he's a little bit undersized for the modern day key forward. Yep. At least Jace is probably about your height, but he's he's really held that forward line together the last few years, Tim Membry. And Root, 15-3 is the St Kilda score at the moment. <laughs> wow, no issue with the accuracy today. They did the same thing against the Bulldogs a couple of weeks ago, the Saints, and it just it makes such a difference. You get that reward for effort on the scoreboard. Interesting with the performance from St Kilda today, it's, it's hard to find a standout player from the Saints. They've all done a job. Everyone's worked hard. A lot of really good, solid players, but no super standout performances. Cochin out of the centre for the Tigers, out towards Dustin Martin, takes it, drops it, fights back. Twisting and turning under pressure, he's given it up, Dusty. Big go for the Saints here, and away they go through Hanabry. Hanabry, little chip kick into King, who marks it. Looks up, he's got players on him, the goal square. Loney is sprinting down there. King does the right thing, just holds it up and finds Marsh. He can go back and kick this. And the next little milestone for the Saints is if they can kick 100 points against the Tigers, which is something sensational for them. In a shortened game. Yep. So it's been an all-round performance for St Kilda. So Jonathan Marsh... Gets his chance from right on 50. Kicks it from 60 in the end. And he's just kicked it off the side of his boot. Ball hits the deck off the ground. Kent almost got it away. Picked up by Baker. Good play to Floston. Now, not much on. Floston kicks up and it's all Saints. It's going to be coming back. Martin's one of the players there for the Tigers. But good play by Howard. Concedes some ground and the Saints are doing this well. They're running down the clock, holding the ball and putting pressure on the Tigers. Three minutes, 20 to go. Good play by Kent, good body work. Caddy. Hear the sounds of the game there, brought to you by Fox Footy, as Edwards picks up on defence of 50. Tigers on the move. Baker to Martin. Trying to chain up again, but oh. the Saints 
Now they win it back through long. Good commitment. Marsh clever enough. Well, the handle wasn't perfect. Sets Hanbury up. Long comes through. That was a little bit sloppy. And he gives away the free kick. It's going to Cotchen. He's kept battling his 22nd disposal. Desperate body work, but it's crept over the line and out of bounds. And Nick, it's, well, you've got a smile on your face from a security point of view, but from MRV's point of view, it's, uh, it's been a different day. Yeah, it has. It's, it's been a really significant day nonetheless. I know no crowd, but just for the national impact that this will have for bone marrow failure sufferers, there's a whole program and strategy that we want to roll out for those people and to be so well supported by, by the government, who we heard from before, the federal government, and Minister Hunt, um, and then some of our partners as well, as well that have been great contributors over the journey, Dare Ice Coffee, RCA, McDonald's, Pepper Money, they've all contributed again, which we're very grateful for. Tom Lynch to have a late shot for goal for the Tigers. It looks to be a bridge too far right now. He kicked two goals in the first quarter, Tom Lynch. And he's got to go back and take his time over this one. The two football clubs as well, St Kilda. In what is a really difficult year with, with so much going on, to have embraced Matty's match along with the Tigers the way they have is, uh, is a huge win for us at MRV. So Lynch in front of goal. Oh, came off that one and it goes away to the right. Shake of the head there, Damien Harbrick. He's just got to endure these last minute and 37 seconds. So a big win for St Kilda coming up here. Carlisle's kick, he's been good, Carlo. He was good last week in a losing side. Baker trying hard. Floston, ball knocked out of his hand. Good play by Stack. Tigers still running to the final whistle here. McIntosh tries to flick it back. Caulfield is gaining in experience and also in confidence the last couple of weeks the ball goes over the line out of bounds and a throw in so with a minute one on the clock nick revolt how are you feeling about your saints yeah no, they've performed really well pretty similar performance to two weeks ago against the dogs where there was the run and carry and, and the ball use that looked really convincing would have got plenty of saints people excited and for the tigers last time they got rolled at a maddie's match like this they never didn't lose a game for the rest of the year and won the flag so hopefully there's a good omen in here for them too so 46 seconds left on the clock. Man, he'd be happy. The Saints are having a big win, and Nick kicked the, and uh, Jack kicked the beautiful goal from the boundary line. Uh, she'd be loving all of that. Yeah. Liverpool won the Premier League overnight. So. Exactly. Good omen for teams that won in 1990, I hope. <laughs> so the last go, and the Saints get back and take the mark. Tough game to give votes, guys. Oh, battle's been good. Bellings. <laughs> Good luck. And that's for the Ian Stewart medal. Of course, the first man to win Brownlow's at two clubs, the great triple Brownlow medalist, Ian Stewart, won two at the Saints Premiership player, just a superstar. Another great Tasmanian as well, Rui. So, Hutto, four seconds to go. The Saints are going to win a big game of football for their club. Oh, it's a massive win for them, and won't they be delighted? They know how hard it is to beat this Richmond team. And that man led the way early, Dan Butler. Tim Membry was a great source of goals. He kicked three goals for the afternoon. They both kicked three goals for the afternoon. They're battered and bruised, but they're delighted. And Richmond have got some issues now. They've had a draw and two losses since their round one victory. And they are well and truly back with the pack. They had challenges last year to overcome, which we all know they were able to do and really get it going when it mattered. But this is a shortened season, so you can't afford to lose too many. Damien Hardwick will know that well. They've gone down to the Saints by 26 points today. So what a win. Yeah, it is. Look at that scoreline, though, 15-3. And that is going to be the difference this year. You're going to take your chances in these shortened games. 15 3 to 10 7 67. A great effort by St Kilda today. Yeah, we saw Rowan Marshall, we got Butler on screen there. Rowan Marshall, I think Nan Curvis had the edge on him for a lot of the day, but he finished really strongly.